When a monopolist produces a quantity where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue and then prices on the demand curve, the monopolist is profit maximizing. And the reason that this point on the demand curve is the profit maximizing point is because if the monopolist were to produce an additional unit of output, it would lose more money than it would gain. So it would gain additional profit here from the additional units that it's producing and selling at the new price. But it would lose profit on all the previous units that it has produced and was selling at a higher price. This point is profit maximizing because this area is roughly equal to this area. In fact, this area is just slightly bigger than this area, so the loss from producing one more unit is just slightly bigger than the gain from producing one more unit. That's why that's the profit maximizing point. Now think of two firms in an oligopoly. We know those two firms are producing more than the monopoly quantity, which means they must be together making less profit than the monopolist who's profit maximizing. And that means that those two firms in the oligopoly have an incentive to collude. They have an incentive to enter an agreement in which they both commit to producing less than they would if they competed with each other. And such an agreement is called a cartel agreement. So imagine the two of us in a cartel. I come to you and I say, look, we're producing too much. Jointly, we're making less profit than we could make if we jointly agree to produce less. So why don't we each agree to produce only half the monopoly quantity? So we produce half the monopoly quantity each. And as a result, together, we'll get the largest possible profit in the industry. Half of the largest possible profit in, in the industry is bigger than what we're making by competing and producing more than the monopoly quantity. So we both clearly have an incentive to agree to do this. But do we have an incentive to stick by the agreement? Well, we can see in this picture why we don't have that incentive. So I'm going to think about, should I cheat on the agreement? I've agreed to produce half the monopoly quantity. Suppose I think you will abide by the agreement. Should I produce more? Well, if I produce an additional unit, I'm going to collect all this profit from that additional unit because I'm the one that's producing it. But the price is going to fall and we're jointly going to lose this area of profit. But I'm only going to lose half of it because I was only producing half of it to begin with. So I'm only going to lose half of this area. I'm going to gain all of this area. And they were roughly equal to begin with. So I have a clear incentive to cheat on the agreement that we just made and to produce more than what I agreed to. In fact, we can quantify how much I'm going to cheat by thinking about my residual demand curve if I think you're going to abide by the agreement. So if we redraw the market demand curve and the marginal cost curve, we know that the marginal cost intersects the demand curve at twice the monopoly quantity. If you produce half the monopoly quantity, as you've agreed to, then the residual demand that's left over for me is shifted in by half the monopoly quantity. So I have to shift this demand curve in. That'll be my residual demand curve. If you stick by the agreement and you produce half the monopoly quantity. That means this is going to intersect at 1.5 times the monopoly quantity because we've shifted in by half the monopoly quantity. And now I can just draw in my residual marginal revenue curve that's going to intersect at half the distance. Half the distance is 0.75 times the monopoly quantity. So if I think that you're going to stick by the agreement, I'm going to end up producing three quarters of the monopoly quantity, which is 50% more than what I agreed to. So the incentive to cheat 
is significant. Of course, you have the same incentive to cheat, so you're probably not going to produce half the monopoly quantity. You're going to produce more than that. But as soon as we decide we can cheat on the agreement, we're actually right back to playing the Cournot quantity game, where we calculated before that each of us is going to produce two-thirds of the monopoly quantity. And we're going to be right back to making less profit than we could if we just found a way to limit our production to half the monopoly quantity each. So that's the inherent problem that cartels face. There's an instability to cartels because each firm in a cartel, while it has an incentive to agree to join the cartel, also has an incentive to cheat on what it agreed to do within the cartel.